Hello, my name is Andrew McInerney and I'm the Artistic Director of the Studio de Musique Ancien de Montréal and it's a great pleasure to present to you these pre-concert interviews for our 47th season. I'm delighted that Gilles Cantrell has been talking with SMAM about our upcoming concert, The Six Bach Motets. Gilles is an extraordinarily accomplished musicologist and music educator. Among his many prestigious appointments, he's a member of the supervisory board of the Bach Foundation in Leipzig. By his own admission, Bach is his passion, and he loves nothing more than directing his music or playing it on the organ. And I'm very grateful that he has shared some of his insights into the motets with us. As Gilles has provided this in French, I'm going to give you a brief précis in English. I encourage you, if you can, to listen to the original in French. So Bach wrote over a thousand pieces, and of those pieces, only six are motets. And it's a good question to ask why. Well, Gilles' theory is it's because they are so difficult to perform. They are amongst the most challenging of Bach's work, because you have eight separate voices presenting complex harmony and beautiful polyphony at the same time. Every line must be presented clearly while sounding together. So let me give you a bit of background to the pieces. Bach's job as the cantor at St Thomas was to provide music to support the liturgy. In addition to the regular Lutheran services that went on week in, week out, Bach was required to provide music for special services, like weddings and funerals. It might be a surprise to learn that if you were to go to a funeral at Bach's church, it is very unlikely you would hear a motet by Bach. When Bach needed to supply a motet, he would usually use a piece from the Florilegium Portens, an enormous collection of motets that was published in Leipzig in two volumes in 1618 and 1621. Now these volumes held 365 motets by 58 composers, representing some of the finest works from around Europe, particularly from the Low Countries and from Italy. And these pieces were written in three to eight voices, several of them in a two-choir format, like Bach's own motets. Bach's motets themselves were only written for important members of civic society and for religious leaders. And indeed, he was commissioned directly by them to do that. And it's possible they were written to be performed at the funeral service, or perhaps as a remembrance on the anniversary of the loss of a loved one. Now, as these were being performed at solemn occasions, it's likely that often they would have been performed a cappella or with minimal instrumentation, possibly just with an organ or with a continuo cello. And that means that they'd be very different to what you'd hear when you heard one of his cantatas, which would be accompanied occasionally by an orchestra, or certainly with trumpets and drums, if it was for a more celebratory occasion. So it's worth exploring how the motets were constructed. And they're all based, to some extent, on Lutheran chorales. Now, Lutheran chorales are the hymns that the congregation would have sung together during worship. And as a result of that, they were very well-known melodies. Not only were the melodies well-known, but the words that went with those melodies and the meaning of those words within their faith were very well known. Bach integrated chorales into his work regularly. In fact, almost 400 harmonizations of chorales exist, not only harmonized independently, but incorporated within cantatas, within his passions, and within his motets. In addition to this deep connection with the words of the chorales and the melodies of the chorales, Bach was also very well read. He was knowledgeable on philosophy and on theology, and he was an expert at integrating music into the liturgy to support the worship. To give an example of this, we're just going to look at one of the motets. Jesu meine Freude. Jesu my joy. Despite the use of the word joy, Jesu meine Freude is a funeral motet. The joy spoken of here is the joy of having Jesus by my side as I die, and the knowledge that having faith in Jesus will bring eternal life. The piece consists of a chorale, the Jesu meine Freude chorale, which consists of six verses. And Bach takes each verse and gives it a very particular treatment with the voices, with the harmony, to match the meaning of the words of each verse. He then interposes 
five extracts from the Epistle to the Romans, each of which is carefully selected to be a reflection on the preceding chorale text. There's a further juxtaposition here because the text of the chorale is in the first person, whereas the text of the reflection is in the third person. To give you an example from the third verse of the chorale, the choir is singing, I stand here and I sing in secure peace, whereas the reflection following it goes on to say, you are not of the flesh, but you are of the spirit, since God lives in you. The piece also has a very important spiritual message. In the fourth stanza, the chorale says, good night existence, as the person who has died leaves us. The reflection reassures us that the spirit of that person has now gone to heaven. And in the final verse of the chorale, we have reassurance that we need not worry because their faith has given them life eternal. Ending up with the same line as we started, Jesu meine Freude, Jesu my joy. And this positive sentiment is echoed in some of the other motets as well, particularly in Lobet den Herrn, which is in three parts, the final of which is this fantastic, joyful Alleluia. And this is connected with the beliefs of the time that death was in many ways a release from the challenges and the sin of the, of the mortal world. But I leave you thinking about the fact in these Bach motets we have eternal music representing eternal life.